Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us at Microsoft Research Summit 2021. My name is Song Han, assistant professor from MIT. So today, my presentation's title is Computationally Efficient Large-Scale AI. So nowadays, we are solving more complicated AI problems with larger data sets, which require more computation. However, the Moore's law is slowing down, and the amount of computation per unit cost is no longer increasing at a historic rate. Therefore, we need computationally efficient AI. According to this study, training a single AI model can emit as much carbon as five cars in their lifetimes. So this is mentioning the evolved transformer with neural architecture search. Doing such neural architecture search for transformers is taking 200 and 50 GPU years, which emit a carbon emission of 626,000 pounds, which is equal to five cars in their lifetime. Well, in this presentation, we'll describe techniques to reduce this training cost by uh, four orders of magnitude. And that is achieved by using this once-for-all network with weight sharing and decoupling training and search. Conventional neural architecture search method is computationally expensive because, because and outside this very already expensive training forward and backward loop, there is a meta controller for many different search episodes and for different for many different hardware devices. We have to repeat um, this expensive search loop. We propose once for all model that decouple training and search, so we train only once and get this once for all model. This is taking roughly uh, three times the computation running a single AI model than training a single AI model. But this can be amortized by across many different devices and across different search episodes. So during search time, we just need to sample from the once for all model, which is very lightweighted. And we can train only once and get many different subnetworks for free to fit diverse hardware constraints. Like we can deploy a larger model for, uh, for iPhone 12, or we can deploy a smaller model for iPhone XS. So users may have both high-end phones and also low-end phones. We want to be inclusive for users who have those low-end phones. But it is very expensive to design those neural, neural network models of different sizes at, at large scale. So one small model is like a large scale producer that can produce neural networks of different sizes at very low search and training cost. Similarly, we can deploy a larger sub-network for the GPU and smaller one for IoT device. And it turned out this method performed even better than training the same architecture from scratch due to better supervision and regularization. And similarly, we can deploy a larger sub-network for full battery case and a smaller sub-network for the battery saving mode. And it turned out we can train 10 to the 19th different subnetworks at the same time, which is very computationally efficient, since we are paying over only the three times the overhead compared with training one model, but we can obtain 10 to the 19 models at the same time. And uh, this is an analogy to the human brain, which activates sparsely. And the once for model contains many child networks that are also sparsely activated. Not all of them are working at the same time. And these child networks share the weights with the once for network, and they are trained jointly. In this method, we can reduce the carbon footprint of AI by using such a more um, advanced technique to do neural architecture search. So having obtained this once for all model, we can perform evolutionary architecture search by uh, using a latency and accuracy predictor. And if the model meets the target latency, then we keep the architecture. Otherwise, we resample the architecture by mutation and crossover. This once for all model is very effective. It can reduce the latency by 2.6 times uh, faster while achieving a top one image net accuracy of more than 80%. And the accuracy is 3.8% higher compared with uh, the efficient net. So all the result is measured on the Google Pixel 1 CPU, and the y-axis is the image net accuracy. So not only on this general purpose hardware, 
but also on specialized hardware like the Zilin FPGA, we can achieve a better throughput. So compared with Mobile V2 in gray, MNAS that in yellow, and our one four model in green, uh, we can improve the throughput by almost 50%. So measured on the Zilin CU9EG FPGA, uh, we can improve the throughput from roughly 100 GOPS per second to 155 GOPS per second. On the right-hand side is a smaller FPGA, again using the same one for our model, but just sub using a smaller subnet, it can achieve a higher throughput of 76 compared with 48 and 44, which indicates a brand new um, methodology for improving the FPGA's performance by just smartly designing the neural network model without the need to change the RTL. So our model has a higher arithmetic intensity uh, which is less memory bounded. Therefore, the FPGA can fully utilize its DSPs. So this, this figure compares the modern deep neural nets with respect to the amount of computation, which is on the X axis, show in max, the amount of multi multiplication and accumulates, and the Y axis is the amount of uh, accuracy. So the smaller the computation, the higher the accuracy, the better the quality. So here, the one small model can achieve 80% uh, top point accuracy, but require only 595 median max. And it sets a world record in the open division of the ML Perf inference benchmark, which is the Olympic game for AI chip and AI inference throughput it can achieve more than 1 million images per second on 8 A100 GPUs and, uh, re and reaches the accuracy of, uh, of resident 50 level image net accuracy. So we can see that these auto ML design models consistently outperform those human baselines and it provides a turnkey solution for hardware and neural architecture co-design. So this one's for our approach. I uh, received many awards in the third, fourth, and fifth low power computer vision challenge in multiple hardware platforms, CPU, uh, DSP, FPGA, and for multiple tasks like detection, segmentation, um, and also uh, detection, segmentation, classification, visual wafers, and also, and also language modeling. This method is widely adopted in industry, both on the cloud and also on the edge. Okay, so apart from those uh, 2D images, let's also talk about the more computationally challenging part, which is uh, 3D uh, videos. So we'll introduce TSM, Temporal Shift Module for Efficient and Scalable Video Understanding on Edge Devices. So video is the biggest, the biggest data, big data, and the amount of videos are growing explosively. They are 10 to the fifth hours of videos uploaded to YouTube every day. And efficient video processing is e essential for both the cloud and also on the edge. However, those video understanding is very computationally expensive. Uh, people need to uh, model those temporal relationships as well as the spatial, spatial modeling. For example, by just looking at a single image, uh, we cannot tell whether we are putting something from left to right or putting something from right to left. Therefore, we need a temporal modeling. People used to use uh, 3D convolution or LSTM or, it, or its derivatives to perform those temporal modeling, which is very computationally uh, in, inefficient. We propose a new approach, uh, which is temporal shift to perform temporal modeling. So. TSM stands for Temporal Shift Module, which shifts part of the channels along the temporal dimension to facilitate the information exchange among neighboring frames. And for online video understanding scenario, we only shift part of the channels from the past to the future. And the nature of the shift is that it doesn't contain any extra flops just by moving the pointer, and it also contains zero parameters. So it's very convenient and efficient uh, to add TSM to the 2D backbone. So here we can see 
uh, TSM is very low cost, up to two, six times reduction of computation compared with prior art, while achieving much better, much higher accuracy. So less amount of computation, but higher accuracy. Since TSM is so small and lightweighted, we can uh, carry out efficient inference on these edge platforms. On a JSON Nano, um, consuming only 4.5 watts, it can achieve 74 frames per second at an energy consumption of only an LED bulb level. So paving the way for this energy efficient AI, even on a Raspberry Pi, it can achieve 14 frames per second. On the Samsung Note 8 mobile phone, it can achieve 29 frames per second. So here we have the uh, i3D comparison. So compared with conventional 3D convolution-based method, which runs, uh, which requires 164 milliseconds to run each video, now it's only 17 milliseconds per video. And throughput-wise, we can improve the throughput. So here, each row is a row of videos, okay? And we can improve the throughput from 6.1 videos per second to 77.4 videos per second with even better accuracy. So here, we can recognize some paths very accurately. For example, moving something closer to something, and heating something with something. And we, all, we can also dissect the semantics of each channel, like moving something away, this is in frame number three, four, and five, is indicating we are moving something away. Similarly for wiping, the spatial and the temporal frames is annotated, it can be interpreted to see which frames and which locations are doing the action. So beyond efficient inference, we also scale up the distributed training. So we use the Summit supercomputer, which has six NVIDIA T uh, V100 GPUs connected by InfiniBand. And we can scale it up to 1,536 GPUs, reducing the training time from 49 hours and 15 minutes to only 14 minutes. So that's two, from more than two days of training time to only 40 minutes from just a cup of coffee. So that's 211x speed up compared with this theoretical speed up of 256 times. And the reason is due to the smart design of the model, which has smaller model size, therefore smaller amount of gradient does need to be, does need to be exchanged over the networking. And also reducing a reduced the data movement from IO, therefore is no longer data movement bounded. So here, TSM has fewer flops and better throughput and utilization compared with the baseline I3D method. And in the middle, TSM is lightweighted in I.O., saving the disk bandwidth, which is uh, can be fully hidden uh, and fully hidden and, and overlapped with the computation. Well, the baseline method, still a, a big chunk of the time is, is, is wasted on the uh, I.O. due to the slow disk. And on the right-hand side, TSM has a better scalability. Uh, with the number of GPUs, the scalability is decreasing much slower compared with the baseline. So the scalability is defined as the actual speed up compared with the theoretical speed up. So we can scale up TSM uh, for batch size up to 12K without the degradation of the error rate. And compared with uh, the baseline I3D method, TSM can improve the scalability from 1.6 times to 2.9 times due to the smarter model design. Okay, so having talked about scalable and efficient uh, vision applications, let's switch gear to talk about tiny ML and efficient natural language processing. We first review this slide where training a single AI model using neural architecture search. Uh, with this evolved transformer is taking as much carbon as five cars in their lifetimes. And how to save this search cost? So we can use this once-for-all approach. Okay, so we can design a once-for-all transformer, just train only once, but can be deployed by many different scenarios. A smaller model for IoT device, a large model for the GPU device. 
and measured on the Raspberry Pi, it can achieve a 2.7x latency reduction and 3 times 7 times 3.7 times reduction of the model size from 175 megabytes to only 48 megabytes. While the search cost can be reduced by four orders of magnitude, since the training time is fully amortized by different uh, scenarios, and also uh, this is a one-shot approach. So this um, hardware-aware transformer can also be uh, can, can be combined with conventional model compression techniques to further boost the compression ratio. So altogether, we can reduce the model size from 705 megabytes to only 28 megabytes. So that's 25x reduction of the model size, while the accuracy, um, the machine translation performance measured in blue score uh, is well maintained from 41.2 to 41.1. So beyond this hardware-aware transformer, we also investigated another technique called a spatten. Uh, which means sparse attention to improve the efficiency of natural language processing tasks. So basically, the human language can be inefficient, as the headline of this MIT news highlighting our work. If we shadow away human can and be just keeping two, two words out of five language inefficient, we can still understand the meaning of the whole sentence. But we can save the computation. Rather than processing five tokens, now we need to process only two tokens. In the example on the left, we can perform such cascade token pruning on this sentence. As a visual treat, the film is almost perfect. We can prune from 11 tokens to five tokens. As treat, film perfect. And we can further prune that to only two tokens, film perfect. And we can still cl classify the sentiment to be positive. So this cascade pruning, it will uh, prune those unimportant tokens and has on the fly and doesn't affect the accuracy. This is fundamentally different from weight pruning since there is no weight in the attention mechanism. And the, prune, the token that need to, needs to be pruned has to be determined dynamically. For example, we can accumulate vertically for the attention score for different words. Like I bet the video game is a lot more fun than the film. So the accumulated prob attention probability is much lower for these tokens, such as I, the, a, uh, the, and the period. Therefore, we can remove those tokens while keeping the performance. A second technique beyond this sparse attention is the progressive quantization. So the idea is we want to use as fewer bits uh, as possible. And the intuition is that the larger the max attention probability, the smaller the attention error if we just use fewer number of bits. For example, in this sentence, as a visual treat, the film is almost perfect. Uh, the attention probability is very equal, like uh, treat, film, perfect are both around uh, 0 0.3. Therefore, if we uh, use only 4 bits to quantize the model, it doesn't hurt the um, it, it hurts the accuracy a lot due to there's no uh, a token that stand out among others. On the bottom, he is a very famous researcher in computer architecture area, period. Um, it is very apparent that a famous is strictly dominates the other tokens. Therefore, if we replace that with four bits, there's very little degradation uh, of the accuracy. Therefore, we use four bits as much as possible and only use high precision when the max prob attention probability is low and even. By combining them together, uh, we built the hardware accelerator, which is a specialized hardware to support um, this sparse attention token pruning and progressive quantization. It can dynamically select those important tokens with a high throughput, high parallelism top K engine and can support the attention operation with high efficiency, over 150x speed up on the GPU. We also propose a hardware support for general sparse matrix matrix multiplication called a Spark. Um, it can achieve uh, two orders of magnitude speed up over the GPU. So the, here is the breakdown of the speed up. So 22x comes from the specialized data path. 
3.4x with whole kind of head pruning and another 2.8 times from progressive quantization. That's all for my presentation. Thank you for your attention.